No. No. Fuck, that was stupid. <laughs> Man, that was so stupid. Ah! Hey everybody, what's going on? From Rock Solid Gaming, I'm Brady Godden, and you're watching The Hot Seat, where we put our guests through a series of wings to see how hot they can truly handle. The show is presented by Rock Solid Gaming and sponsored by Winging It and Rocketeer Treats. Thank you both for these sponsors. We really do appreciate it. On today's show, we have a comedian with us today. <laughs> he's world-renowned. He's He's did shows in, what, 32 different countries? At the least. man's done over 3,000 shows. Mr. Brian L. Word. Woo! Cue the applause. Yeah, Cue man. the applause. Oh, yeah. We appreciate you being here, bro. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. I know uh, I know you're on tour right now, the Best Con Comedy Tour. Yeah. I know you're a busy dude, so we really appreciate you coming on the show, man. Yeah, man, no worries. You ready for this? Nope. So, obviously, we can start it off. You can let the viewers know how you are with Spicy stuff. Uh, not good, man. I'm not good. Pearl, man. What do you mean? No one's good with anyone in New Flanders <laughs> said they're good with spicy stuff. It's full of shit, man. I hear you. Like, we're on boiled rabbit and cabbage, man. So, <laughs> get ready to fucking watch sweat pour down my head. But we were talking before production. We all started this, and you said you were living in Thailand or yeah. something like that. So, you're used to some kind of spice. Yeah, yeah, I definitely had spice, but I mean, it just never, it never, I never get used to it, man. No, I know. No. It's you just, can't get used to this stuff. No, man. The cabbage is in my soul, you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it then. All right. So the first sauce is Stubbs. Who's that dude? Do you know that dude? I, I do not. Right. I assume it's like a, a, an Aunt Jemima type deal. Stubby. Yes, Whoa. sir. Hey. <laughs> I mean, Cancel. It is what it is. All right. We got a comedian here. Let's, let's get into it. Let's go. All right. First one's always cheers. Cheers. Let's go. Let's do it. This one's a favorite of mine, actually. No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stubbs? You ever have? I don't think so. I'd remember Uncle Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, comedy aside, before we get too much into it, yeah. I know you said that time, like that's your full-time gig and all that. Yeah. Well, what about other stuff? Hobbies? You got family? You got Hobby, yeah, man. I'm uncle. I got two nephews. Okay. Nicholas and Harrison. What's going on, boys? <laughs> um, yeah, man. I mean, my wife, we love nature. We love traveling. I mean, that's what I love to do is just when I'm not on tour with Mike and Colin, uh, we just pick another country and go. Nice. Uh, last year was Africa and a bit of Europe, and this year will be Europe and a bit of South America. So no kids. No kids, right? So you've got the freedom to do all this traveling yeah, man. and kids stuff are garbage. like that. Kids are garbage. Yeah. You heard it here first from Brian yeah, you heard Edward. it. You got kids? Get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this next one, Chipotle. First of all, you never found that one too bad, eh? No, man. That was nice. That, that was one's just, a that good was little starter. Good little starter. All right. Chipotle Rebel. Yep. We're going to this one here now. Chipotle Rebel. This one's a mild sauce. Nothing okay. too crazy. Let's do it. See how you think about this one. I am curious. Oh, I think this is a sneaky one. Yeah. Well, it got that. Yeah. You can tell. This one got that weird. Yeah. This one got that spice, huh? It's coming. Yeah, that got a little. A little creeper. A little creeper, yeah. Yeah. All right. Chipotle Rebel. Okay. So, you got a, you're on tour right now. Yep. You got some shows coming up in Alberta. Yeah. By the time this air, you'll be in Alberta. Okay. What are you looking forward to as far as venues or cities? Like, I mean, always Calgary, Edmonton, Fort Mac. Um, we're finishing in BC and Kelowna, which is always fun. I mean, well, last year we packed a curling club there. I mean, they've been through some stuff this year for sure, so we're hoping to do that again. But, I mean, Fort Mac's always amazing. I mean, we pack Keanu Theater and just go mad. So how many people would you say? Keanu's like, I think it's like 550, 600, something That's like that. Fine. So, and then, yeah, look forward to the brisket and all that stuff, you know, the good food. And yep. Yeah, man. Wicked. So, you did Jack Byrne. I was at your Jack Byrne show. Okay. You did that one. Would you say that was probably one of your most attended? Yeah, definitely. Maybe not you personally, but no, say the definitely. best con comedy tour. No, for sure. I think it was the most attended one. Like, we did Convention Center one year, which was close, and we did CBS Arena. We did more, like, a few years ago. But, yeah, I mean, once you're doing small arenas like that, it's crazy. Dude, that was packed. Yeah, it was crazy. The floor it was, was awesome, packed. The yeah. oh, it was incredible. Great yeah, atmosphere, thanks, too. Man. Yeah, man. It was... It was nice. Your opener was hilarious. Yeah, Danny. Danny O'Brien. He is freaking hilarious. Shout man. out to Danny. Yeah. He's good crack. He's not from Newfoundland, is he? No, Dublin. 
but he related so much to Newfoundland. Yeah, all, he was all blown away, man. I mean, we, um, I met him in, uh, me and him went on tour in Asia together. And then, um, yeah, I ended up, he ended up giving me his place in Dublin to, to, to live while I was uh, touring around uh, Ireland, my wife and I. And, then, you know, kind of said he'd be a great host for us, right? He comes back and he was great, man. He was blown away by how close it was. He, was, he said something like, it was like Irish people doing an Irish accent. Yeah. And then, yeah. But his jokes were just so relatable. Like, it's like he did yeah, so man. much research on, on Newfoundland. We felt like assholes because we brought him out to the Irish loop. We said, let's go with that. But we didn't have enough time because we were going to Mike's parents for uh, jigs. And uh, so we ended up just driving up towards Cove, just fucking flying by pine trees, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, remember this, tell your family. Tell your family, yeah. the Irish loop. The, the greatest Irish drive loop. in Newfoundland. The greatest right. drive. All right. All right. Jalapeno, you a fan? Sure. This one's not too, too bad. Okay. I feel like this one gets us started, but then the next yeah, few Yeah, that one's starting, is, to, starting to fuck around. The next few isn't too, too bad. Okay. Mmm. Oh, that that's really tasty. I know. That's cool. really good. It is, isn't it? Yep. All right, so I want to know more about the situation. I'm, I'm sure you've told this story multiple times. Well. Take me back to 2005. 2005, um, I was teaching English in South Korea, and um, just not sure what I wanted to do. I was 31, so I was already kind of getting older in my head. And I uh, had an ex of mine who uh, we made a bet. If she quit smoking for a month, I'd go on stage. I thought she couldn't quit, so I wasn't even worried about it. She did, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> now i got to do this. And then I went on, and I was hooked immediately. I moved to Toronto like three weeks later. Okay. And just kept going. But it was in, it was in like Asia area, right? Like it was over Yeah, I was in Anyang, South Korea. Okay. Anyang, hi, Seo. What's that my mean? Korean fans, hello. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> Sweet, so you and, still uh, know some of that language. Well, no, just do my Korean, do my Korean, my K-pop, my K-pop faces. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know a little bit of it. Um, yeah, Anyang at a place called Roxins. It was like a Friday night bar, like rowdy as fuck, man. It was teachers and like military, U.S. military. And um, I, I was supposed to do seven minutes. I did 14. I had a bunch of friends show up, like 40, 50 people. And uh, it went horrible. But uh, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't care. I, I, like, I, well, I wasn't scared anymore. No. I was terrified. I mean, mm -hmm. I went to like, I was in three or four comedy clubs before that with my name on lists and I didn't go up. They were like, Brian Elward. And I'm like, man, I don't, I don't think he's here. Okay. So I was proper scared. So this one here, another uh -huh. favorite. Yeah. Uh, Blueberry and Scorpion from Pepper North. Great sauce. We're getting into like the 30, 40,000 Scoville range now. Okay. So it's going to pick up a little bit. Once we get the hair, it's all downhill from there. Wow. But this one's good tasting though. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. I'm just, just going to eat them like there's no sauce on them. See what happens. That's it's what starting to that. happen. I'm getting a little bit of I a puddle see. on top of my head. I see it. So it's coming. I do. All right. So it's, you know, going back to that. Oh, here we go. It's happening. Because obviously that's a big turning point in your career. Yeah. That whole going on stage. Yeah. Um, any wild stories? I like, followed a North Korean refugee one time on stage. That was fucked. Yeah? I can't remember. It was, a, it, was a show, it was a show called Beyond Borders. It was this guy from Belgium. I'll remember his name in a minute. And anyway, he was going around and he came to this open mic. And back then it was like, I was in Korea. It was like, I'd be on an open mic with a fucking accordion player, a fucking singer, a <laughs> fucking Russian dancer. Like it was one of those. He came and he got all these eclectic kind of acts. And he said, if you want to meet us at, a, at an art gallery, there's this art gallery. Had a Picasso and everything. So I was super uncomfortable. I'm like, I don't, I don't belong in there, man. Mm. I can't be going. Like, fuck it, I'll do it. And at the time, I was only two years in. I sucked. You, can you come do 10 minutes? Sure. So I go, and again, it's like me and an accordion player and a Russian dancer and all these people. And he doesn't tell us. And all of a sudden, he's like, uh, so I'm there with my buddy Scott, who's actually from El Pearl. We're sitting there in Seoul, South Korea, in this art gallery, right? Picasso's everywhere. And uh, he goes, um, okay, we got a special guest. And there's a guy literally from North Korea who escaped from North Korea. His name was Kim Young Il. Just Instead fine. of Kim Jong Il, right? <laughs> and I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" And he went up, and he had an interpreter, and he told his whole story how he escaped from like he was a guard, then he escaped through a fence, watched his friend's <coughs> friend be electrocuted in front of him, got over the river into China. Long story short, made it there, and he's telling this story, and we're sitting there like, "Are you fucking kidding me, man?" <laughs> and then the guy goes, "I'm looking at my friend. I'm like, this is he should be the headliner, right?" Yeah. You know I mean, like, fuck. So you're going out bad for this dude? <clears throat> well, I don't know. I'm still there's still three or four okay. more people left. Yeah, yeah. And then they go, uh, the guy goes, uh, everybody, you know, sometimes the world is a terrible place. That is why the comedy, Brian Howard. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And I had to follow an North Korean refugee. But it was good, just, though. No, it wasn't. It was fucking horrible. And um, yeah, it was bad. That was back when you were first getting started. Yeah. And then we actually tried to get him drunk. We're like, hey, man, you want to come out and party? Like, we're in Korea, right? I'm like, let's take you out and party. You know, you're fucking, you're free, man. Mm -hmm. 
And he was actually going back to that river in China to help more refugees that night. I'm like, oh, you're a fucking wow. superhero. I'm just a dickhead. I'm trying to get drunk. All right, so we got Black Cherry and Reaper. Ooh, the smell of this is... We're getting into the Reaper stuff now. The Reaper and stuff. The Carolina Reapers. All right. I mean, these too fast, but... No, you're good. I don't know. No rush. Oh, see. Yeah, here we Let's go. Let's see how long you keep that up for. Eating Black fast. Cherry and Reaper. Well, you know... You know, I'm trying to be entertaining here. I'm just trying to make people happy. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, so, back to the cultural gap. Yeah. I want to stay over there for a minute. Sure. How do you, because you did it for what, seven years? I was in Korea for seven years. Yeah. As a teacher. I'll see what happened then. I just changed my voice. Something just happened. I'm um, not throat. Yeah. Seven years as a teacher. And then what I did, I came home and started stand up in Canada. I was in Toronto for a bit, Halifax. And then I went back. And um, that's when I met my wife, Holly, and we moved to Thailand and just went back to Asia because I loved Asia. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, so I've been in Asia 13 years total. I started a thing called Stand Up Soul because I started in, in Korea. So uh, no one else was doing it, but I'm like, there got to be somebody else, right? So I went to this Canadian bar called Rocky Mountain Tavern, talked to the bars. We did a show. Seven people did it, and like 80 people showed up that night or something. And we just kept going. And then I started other rooms and other places because I was desperate. I'm like, there got to be other idiots like me. Mm -hmm. And we just kept going. I got a couple of things we're working on, like Mad About Comedy, we're working on some stuff. Your Hood's a Joke and stuff. Trying to get the roast battles are a big thing now, so I'm like the director of that in South Asia. And roast battles are big over there? Yeah, they're, start they're just starting. Okay. And I think they'll be bigger there than anywhere because <clears throat> the countries have such beef with each other. Whether it's like Malaysia, Singapore, India, Pakistan, whatever. So yeah, it'll be big. And they don't, they don't get on like us with our bullshit. Like, they can take jokes. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't look at it like, be careful, that might be racist. They don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. Everybody hates China, game on. <laughs> How do you prepare a, a comedy show with such a cultural gap? Like, um, I just like to talk about what's going on. I mean, it seems like I talk about myself maybe too much, but it's the only way to be original because I'm like, yeah. I'm just lots of people like me, so I just represent what it is. Uh, I just pay attention, man. I talk about what's in front of me. So when I'm in Korea, like, shit will just happen sometimes, like, and you just, you got to talk about it. Like, there was a game Dung Chim, which is a joke I did for years. It's called Poop Needle in Korea, and kids literally take their fingers, they put them together in the shape of a gun, and they jam you in the asshole. <laughs> is that what it's called? Yeah, man. Poop gun? Dung chim. Yeah, Dung poop chin. needle. Poop needle. Yeah, in Japan, I think it's called kachu or something. It's a real thing, man. And Especially they... when I first went there. So I didn't know. So I'm in class and fucking get fingered, right? Fucking first day. <laughs> I was a kindergarten teacher. Yeah, man. So I was like, the fuck is this, man? Right? And uh, if so you that hair, you'd be shot. Goes. Yeah, I mean, right? You'd be kicked out here. They have a gold statue. In, uh, I think it was Gwangju, maybe? Gold statue in Korea of Dung Chim. It's the guy sneaking up behind another guy and the guy's spread eagle. So it's like, it's not a, it's not like an honored thing, but it's like a, a known thing that people do for fun? or like, what I mean, the some people do that? it for fun. I don't know if it's as fun as it used to be. But yeah, it's a real thing. <laughs> Dung Chim, man. <laughs> yeah. Fuck? So when shit like that happens, there you go, right? Joke number oh, one. Jesus. All right, let's move on. Right. Before, I don't want your mouth to go uh, back You're doing to doing pretty good, but it's starting, starting to have uh, issues. <laughs> yeah, you can feel the bubble. There's a bubbling going on in the middle of my neck. Cheers. Oh, Reaper. Halfway through. Drums or flats? I'd rather boneless. Really? I mean, that's just me. I think that when I'm getting older, I just don't, it's just easier. I know. Just, yeah, you know? Yep, yep. Am I bleeding? <laughs> no, you're you know? sweating. Though. I feel like you're bleeding. No. Okay, I was get, it's getting, yeah, let's get here it comes. Do you need some milk or something? No, I'm good, man. I'm good. Beer. But I'm glad you got 1% there. I'm glad you guys didn't really go for the two. <laughs> You want people to be too comfortable. It's a day from exp expiration too, so. I love how water does absolutely nothing too. It's perfect. No, milk milk will help you out once we get towards it. Well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. No, I'm surprised, man. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Oh. Damn, you really eat. I eating them all too. Yeah, well, it's rude not to, I guess, is it? <laughs> all right. I think a lamb just went off my asshole. <laughs> I want free winging it for life for doing this shit. <laughs> I want to be able to walk into it, winging it whenever I feel like it, and just start winging it. <laughs> Anyone else hear the alarm? <laughs> You're ringing? Coming out of my asshole right now? <clears throat> All right. Whatever, that one was fucking dog shit. <laughs> fuck, stargazer. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's fucking hilarious. All right. Anal gaper. <clears throat> Before we get too much into it with the heat, <sighs> pre show ritual or post show ritual, do you have any? <sighs> Fuck this show, man. <laughs> <coughs> this one's garbage. Taste-wise or Stargazer. Space? Fuck. It's a skull with fucking skeleton hands. My bad. Um, what? 
Post show, pre show rituals. Do you have any rituals before a show or after a show? What uh, your eyes? I usually uh, have 10 wings hotter than this <laughs> before every show. That's how I do it. Get I like to really to get go. bothered. And I like to, you know, when I start seeing cream kind of on my dick hole, I'm like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Showtime, baby. <laughs> Bro, if that um, one's hitting you like that, I cannot wait to get into this. Well, I don't know what happened there. That was, I <laughs> fucking hate that. Rituals, no. No, I like kind of be left alone. I like to lie down, if possible, and just be left alone and like, uh, and and just, yeah, Mike's going over his nose, Colin's doing fucking handstands, whatever the fuck he's doing. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we're on tour. Um, no, no real rituals, more just quiet. I like quiet. And I was going to say, too, like a lot of the people that watch from Ives and Roofland are mm. probably drunk. I drank like nine beer in an hour and a half that night. Did and you? I, and I went to your after party, and I don't remember none of that. Fuck. Hour and a half at a comedy show. Well, see, the, the way the bar was set up, and I just bought them all at the one time. Well, what you don't know is you thought this was about the show tonight. This, Brady, is it's your intervention. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Family walks from yeah, the door. Man, nine and a half. All right. Well, uh, yeah. We had two boys up in Ottawa a week ago, and they said it was had eighteen beer between them to the side. They were best kind after the show. And they were like, "There's two guys over there at eighteen beer, tall boys, at a show at a comedy show." I was like, "Fuck, good job, boys." Well, they're having fun. Yeah, That's sure, but doing. that usually can go off the rails. Like nine tall boys, man, in an hour, an hour and a half. Like fuck. Yeah. Raise your children for fuck's sake. Right. No, I had a great time, man. I can't feel my teeth. That's the that's the start of it. Next is your toes, then it's your legs. You're there though. I got teeth. Then at the end of the then right. at the end of this, you're after I throwing up. All right, one point four million Reaper fifty one. This is the older brother to this one. Yeah. Just to let you know. Well, they're a family of fucking assholes. <laughs> Both of them. All right, let's do this. All right. Good luck. Good luck. You don't need that, dude. You just flattened that. Well, I mean, that's how you eat a wing. You know Holy what I mean? fuck. I look at it like you can't be like eating like a fucking bunny rabbit. Fair enough. Like you're going to hurt. I need a replay of that when we get this all done. You just... Holy shit. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that one went up like top left. Like, <laughs> that's fucked. Only the top left of my mouth is on fire and the rest of it's perfect. Yeah, because you ate it so fast. Oh. Oh, yeah, this one can fuck off too. Both of these can fuck right off. Get rid of them. They're <laughs> fucking garbage. Get them out. Get them out. Oh, man. Well, I did want to talk about the outhouse a little bit. Sure. Because you are pairing out a bit of that. I don't yep. know about the outhouse in general, but you're on what you're on. Yeah, like one range. of the, you know, the characters, one of the dickheads yeah. they call from time to yeah. time. So, how did you get in track with all that? How did you know Mike? Um, How did that happen, man? I don't even. I came back like when I was torn around and I came back to St. John's like, I don't know, seven, eight years ago now, I suppose. And then I met Mike. Uh, he was just a young guy doing it. And uh, to be honest, I didn't even think it was that funny. I thought he was just a regular dude, like on his way up, you know. And then I saw him at Mun uh, do this character, this rap character, whatever. And I was like, oh, shit, that's different. I was like, that's funny as fuck. And my wife Holly was with me. She was, that's so funny. I was like, yeah, man. And... uh so anyway, yeah, then we started hanging out, and I was like, why don't you invite him over to the house? So then he used to come over to the house, we started writing, and uh, <clears throat> I did a tour, and I asked Mike to come out with me, and he was all open up for me, and then we were out in BC, uh, doing my uh, Brian Hour Big Little BC tour, whatever the fuck it was called, Work up. and um, he was doing Randy in the kitchen at his house, and he goes, you want to be the father and do something? I was like, I suppose, like, you know, and I did it, and that was, um, I think that was a St. Patrick's Day one. Anyway, and we just did it ever since then. It got a good, you know, review or whatever, good buzz, and uh, we kept doing it. So many people from Newfoundland know you guys <clears throat> as yeah. those characters, man. Yeah? And recognize you as those characters. Yeah, man, it happens It happens a lot. I get offered a lot of perks on the road. Yeah, so I... And by I, perks, I mean actual perks. Perks, yes. Yeah, because people think I do perks because father does perks. I was like, like perks a lot, man! I'm like, no, oh, man, it's a fucking dickhead character. <laughs> All right, let me move into another thing, then. No. Yeah. Because I ask all the comedians this, yeah. and I want to ask you now that we're on the topic. Uh, let's say a stranger runs into you in the street. Do you feel any pressure to be like that? I didn't hear anything you just said. When someone runs into you in the street, a stranger, <laughs> yeah. do you feel any pressure to be something that you're not wanting to be? Like, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, we're always trying to, I always try to, you know, I always want people to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm always trying to take care of everyone else for myself. That's who I am. Yeah, I, I always do. I hate it. But you got to be but on all the time. Be funny, man. And yeah. I'm like, fuck, this guy. 
But you don't you mind know? it though. No, I hate it. You hate it. No, it's always sweet when someone asks. I mean, it's not like I really get bothered, but some people will be whatever, like, fuck, I wish Father would be here right now. Are you doing like, but I'm not a jukebox, man. That's like, what I mean. You know? Yes. But you get, but I always find it funny with certain people. There was a guy in Dilla one time, come up to me and Mike, we're eating in the restaurant after him. But he comes over and goes, boss, I don't know who the fuck you are, man, but you're pretty good at what you do. Keep her up. And he fucked off. Perfect. <laughs> I love that. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want. Yeah, that's, what that's what I'm looking for. And then just go on. No pictures, no signatures. No, no, but it's awesome, man. We're, again, something's going on down here. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> um, yeah, we're lucky, man. Again, the people we meet is fucking, it's awesome. All right, enough for the fun. Yeah. Six million Scoville. Get bitten. All right, let's go. Fuck yeah. Let's do this. All right. Now, I will say this is a creeper. Oh, yeah. Like. Oh, yeah. Woo, that one, yeah. Fuck. All right, sure. That was the worst one. That one's stupid, man. Yeah, that one is fucking get bitten. How about get fucked? That's garbage. <laughs> get rid of that. Get rid of that. I only get a first burn instead of that. Oh, okay. Okay. Fuck. <clears throat> I told you, I'm on. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm only off to over five days. I got to make sweet tender love to my wife. You still can. And now I'm going to be bleeding out my asshole till at least Monday. I'm too old for this, man. I shouldn't be here. I'm the oldest guest you probably had. Like, I shouldn't. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> we got you here, though. That's all that matters. My nephews will probably like this, though. But that's it. I'm doing it for you, you little fuckers. <laughs> this sucks. Don't do this. Be better than your uncle. Get a fuck. Just be better. All right. Podcast. Uh, your podcast in the pipeline. Uh, Tell me about it. Brian Aylward, half an hour later. Nope. What are we talking about? Well, it's a podcast I've been talking about for two years because I'm a dickhead. And uh, uh, I've been wanting to do it. I'm just one of those guys, like, it's like just getting it going. But I am getting it going for sure. It'll be out by early 2024. Did I just say five nines? I don't know. Um, I felt like I said two, 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 two thousand. <laughs> I felt like I fucking stuttered then. Yeah, maybe. Or just me? Uh, at, this point, at this point, we're both blacking out. We're just saying words. We're just trying to get through this. Okay? This is how it goes. Fuck! Um, what? <laughs> ah, that must be the rebel. It yeah. must be the rebel. Yeah, a real creeper. Yeah. I right, listen, I highly suggest you do not do that with the NFOD. I highly suggest you go fuck yourself. <laughs> How about that? That's what I highly suggest, Brady. Take all this and shove up your fucking ass. How about that? Where the fuck is Sean Evans? It usually happens like this at the end of episode. Ah. This is usually how it is. Ah. All right. <sighs> Fuck. Leave some milk for me, too. Fuck you. <laughs> There's milk there. Jesus, you ever got how much you want? Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. All right. Fill your fucking boots. Uh, podcast, half an hour later. Yeah, it's going to be me <clears throat> going mad every week for a half hour. I'm just going to have little bullet points and look at them and fucking lose my mind. And I'm going to fucking say, here, listen to that. So that was, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you plan on having guests or is it just you like uh, bending into a microphone for a half hour? I'm not sure. I think I might have guests too because I'm lucky enough to meet so many interesting people around the world, right? They're having to be my friends now. So I might have that like little check-ins with friends, little whatever because I know, you know, really interesting people. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a half hour basically whatever I want. But it'll be rants. It'll be stories. It'll be stuff I've been holding back to actually for years. I got a lot of these stories I haven't really been telling. Why a half hour, man? It's not very long. Um, uh, just, I just don't want to commit to too much right now because I got other things going on too because I'm going to start putting out more characters. I'm going to start okay. like... Giving a shit more about my social media. Nice. So I'll, I'll do a half hour for now. Nice. And then we'll go from there. Half an hour later, you know, new flan to theme, all that. Perfect. Oh, fuck. All right, Brian. I feel like my eyes and my ears and my ears and my eyes. We'll do this. Yeah. Pass, right, go more question. You'll do a couple of shout outs, shout out your socials, and then we'll get out of here, okay? All right. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's NFOD, go. 10 sauce, unsure of the Scoville, but it's hot as hell. Unsure. Unsure. Fuck. Again, do not eat the full one, Brian. I gotta be the first one. All right, cheers for the last one. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for having Let's me. Go. No problem, bro. This is fucking this is... stupid. All these quit your jobs. <laughs> this is dumb. Uh, uh, oh. oh, man. Let's go. You are crazy. Let's go. You know, no. Fuck, that was stupid. <laughs> man, that was so stupid. Ah. That was so stupid. Ryan. Uh, what's, what's a weird fact about you? Uh, <laughs> Watch up your eyes. What's a weird fact about me? 
I'm uh, 49 years old and I came on this stupid show for attention. <laughs> That's fucking dumb. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to touch my wife till the end of the tour. Ah. Holy shit. Um, oh, I got no fear of death, but I do got fear of shit in my fucking pants on the way home. Fair so enough, change Ron. the name. Right. <clears throat> no, what was the question? The question was a, a weird fact about you that no one would find online. I used to be cross-eyed when I was a kid. That's pretty cool. Wait, really? Mmm. Straight up fucking, yeah, called amblyopia. It actually means lazy brain. Your brain's too dumb to operate both of your eyes. Fuck! I don't know if I can take you serious. Is that yeah, serious? Yeah, man. Really? wear two patches? Yes, bud. I had to wear two patches. Stay home from school, be on the couch, listen to the cartoon. Brian, thank you, bro. Yeah, uh, well, fuck you. Thanks for coming on, Joe. A lot of people feel that way after this, but listen, you did crazy. You're really good. So we're gonna do the outro. Any last minute shout outs? Uh, shout out. Brian Hour Comedy. That's IG, Facebook, all of it. My my website, Brian Hour Comedy. Just, just go fuck look at it. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's like 89% of you guys not subscribed and are watching the videos. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Comment, like, if you think you can be on the videos. Reach out to our admin teams. Fill out the application. Get involved. Thank you very much, Brian, for coming on. We do appreciate it. Do you, though? I do. Yeah. And we'll talk to you guys later. All right. Bye-bye. Fuck off, everybody.